Okay, good afternoon. This is Jay Waters. I'm with the American and Wartime Museum, and this is our oral history project. Today is 29 October 2018. I'm here in Toms River, New Jersey with Mr. Donald Schwartz, and we're going to do an interview. And sir, great, great to have you out here with us this afternoon. If you would, just please say your, your full name, your place of birth, and your date of birth. Donald C. Schwert, Tom, uh, what, my home address? Uh, just where, where you were born. In, in I was that, born in Irvington, New Jersey. Okay. And what, uh, what war or conflict did you participate in? Well, I was in, I was in during the, the end of World War II when I enlisted in 1946 because the war wasn't declared over until December 31st, 1946. Okay. And I understand you were with the U.S. Navy. Yes. Okay. Did you have any, any family members, parents, brothers, sisters that had served in the military as well? Yes. I had one brother, my youngest brother served in the Navy, and my middle brother, George uh, Richard, he, Richard served in the Coast Guard, and George served in the uh, Navy. Okay. We had, all three of us served. And it sounds like you all had a, a maritime aspect to it, Navy and Coast yes, Guard. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, going back a little bit in time, then, think back to December 7th, 1941, you know, in the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. What, what do you remember about that day? Like, how, how you found out about it? And just, just tell us about that. My mother had picked us up in, from the Milburn Movies which was the next town from Springfield where I was born and where I was raised and moved there, stayed there for 77 years before I came to Tom's River. And we were on our way home from the movies and I can vividly remember we were at Main Street and Morris Avenue and it came over the radio that the Japanese had attacked uh, Pearl Harbor. And we were sitting in the car, we couldn't believe it. Yeah. Uh, my two brothers and my mother, and we said, what, what, what's going on? You know, we didn't realize what happened. So that was how I heard of Pearl Harbor. Did you guys have, have school the next day, or what, what do you think happened the next couple of days? Even? Uh, I think we had school, that, not the next day, but the day after we had school. Okay. Yeah. And you were probably about 12 or 13 years old. I was... Uh, let's see, it was 1941, yeah, I was about 12, I guess. Okay. And then, uh, why did you join the, the Navy? What happened was, it was in March, we were in high school, I was a senior, and my buddy says to me, come on, and he says, uh, let's go join the Navy. I said, Bill, I said, uh, we can't go join the Navy. I said, we won't graduate high school. We only had three more months to go to June. So we talked, we, ended up, we went to New York, we signed up for the Navy, and we were taking our physicals, and they split us up. I was in the physical, I guess, for an hour, hour and a half. I come back out, and he was outside sitting in the chair, and I says to him, you got done already? He says, no. He says, I got to the colorblind chart, and they turned me down. But they said I was qualified. So when I went home, I hid the papers so my mother didn't see them. Uh, we were living with my grandmother and grandfather. So I guess it was in April. I told my mother I had a surprise for her. I said, you have to sign my papers so I can go in the Navy. And she said, I'm not signing them papers. I said, well, well I'll graduate high school if I go now anyhow. I said, because I'm so close. But she was a little smarter. She went down to the high school, and the principal said, no, I'd have to finish high school before I can get my diploma. I couldn't just go in the Navy and then get a diploma. So she waited till the 85th day. The rest of it was 90 days, and would have had to take the physical over again. And then she signed the papers for me. And I graduated on June 20th, 1946, and on June 26th, 1946, I was in Bainbridge, Maryland, in boot camp. So how was how was Navy boot camp in 1946? It was it was very interesting. Uh, at that time, uh, it was a big uh, 
thing on going into the Navy or the Army and that all the younger fellas at our age, at 18. Uh, and when we got down to Bainbridge, we got there about 2 o'clock in the morning and we had to wait for this train to come in from down south. And it was all fellas from Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, Tennessee, and they lined us up in the street and uh, they told us uh, we're going to go to the mess hall and eat first. So they marched us to the mess hall and we got cold hot dogs, beans, and cornbread and they said welcome to the Navy. And after that they lined us back in the street again and they gave us our serial numbers and a little ditty bag with soap and towels and stuff. And uh, that was my first feeling to be in the Navy. And, and you know, I, I should know this, but I don't know where Bainbridge, Maryland is. Is that near the water? Yes, it's right oh. on the river. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. And uh, how long was this, this initial training? In, eight in weeks. Now? Eight weeks? Eight weeks, yeah. And then uh, where did you go after that? Well, I would, we had to go back to the Bainbridge, and I stayed there for about another two, three weeks. And then my orders came in for uh, Brooklyn Navy Yard for the USS Gaynard, the DD-706. That was a torpedo uh, destroyer. Okay. And it was in the Navy Yard getting overhauled. So you were kind of back close to home again? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you went up there. What what'd you do with the, the Brooklyn Navy Yard as you were getting ready for We were working ship? on the boilers and stuff in the fire room. And uh, we were learning how to run them and uh, how to change the burners and the blowers and all that. And uh, take the temperatures in the uh, blower rooms. And uh, anything to do with the boilers, get inside, cleaning them, clean tubes, punch tubes. Uh, and then uh, just before Christmas, they took us out of the Navy Yard and we went up to uh, Newport, Rhode Island. That was going to be our home base. Did you go by ship? No, we uh, went on the ship. Yeah, took we went up, up. To, took it up to Bainbridge, up to uh, Newport. And then about a week later, we joined the uh, task force and we went down to uh, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba for two weeks for shakedown cruise. And then we headed over to the Mediterranean, uh, the whole task force, and we were over there for eight months. And then we came back to Nor uh, Norfolk. And uh, the ship was so bad that I, uh, I wanted to get off it because of the, the way they made us wear our uniforms and everything. We come out of the fire room sweating and everything. We had to change into undress blues or whites to go eat, and then we had to change back into our dungarees. So the captain told me that uh, I could get transferred if I signed up for another year, because my enlistment was only two years. So I said, give me the papers, and I signed up for an extra year, and then I got transferred to the USS uh, Hank, which was a destroyer that took me down to uh, Key West, Florida. And I picked up my second destroyer, the USS H.J. Thomas DDR-833, it was a radar picket ship. Instead of torpedoes, we had a radar okay. tower. Sure. And I was on that one uh, for about two, uh, not quite two years. Well, so even from your training, uh, what was your rating in the Navy? What was your skill? Well, uh, boilerman, I made boilerman third class. Okay. And uh, I was on that, we made two trips on that ship over to the Mediterranean. But even as a boilerman, it sounds like after your initial training, the rest of your training was, was on the ship. Yes. From, from other sailors or, or petty officers, were, you were learning the job on the ship. Yes, okay. yes. And I, then I was uh, oil, what they call oil king for a while. I had to make sure the oil tanks were full. And uh, if they weren't, we had to put the salt water in them and use them for ballast. And then we'd pull up to a supply ship, tanker, we'd have to empty the ship tanks and then fill up with fuel oil. I did that for about six months. Okay. So what was your total amount of time in the Navy? At that time it was three years. 
three. Okay. Yeah. Then I got out in June of 1949. Uh, I got discharged in the Philadelphia Navy Yard. Then I was out for 14 months. And at that time, jobs were hard to get in the 50s. And I finally landed a good job in uh, Shearing Corporation. I was a chemical trainee, chem chemical operator trainee. And they just had vented the uh, core seed in the core medicine or core yeah, thing. Yeah. And they were working round the clock. And uh, I got hired after I took the test, the, uh, the visual test, and I had to take a, a, a interview and everything, and it was a dollar an hour. And I, they put me on the sulfur drug line. So I was in, in a centrifuge with uh, sulfur drugs. Hmm. And um, after about seven months, I'm looking around, looking around, I said, well, for a dollar now, if this place blows up, this ain't worth it. So I went over to New York and I re-upped again into the Navy. And while I was uh, in the Brooklyn Navy Yard, I uh, seen this prisoner, he was mopping the deck. And I said, I know this guy. I said, he was on my last ship. So when I hollered to him, I said, weren't you on the H.J. Thomas? He said, yes, I was on it. I said, where is it? He said, it's in San Diego. He says, it's going to Korea. He said, no, I'm not going. And I said, well, I can see that. You're here in New York. So they asked me, well, what duty stations would you like? They tell you to take picks free, and you usually get one. I picked everything on the West Coast. So about five days after that, my orders came in. Further transfer, Bayonne Navy Yard. So they put me in a truck, and me and another fella, and we went back west from Brooklyn to Bayonne. That's as far as I got. And uh, a small aircraft carrier was our uh, headquarters, the USS Mission Bay. The captain come out and he said to us, well, men, welcome aboard. He said, you're going to be here for two years. I don't want to see any transfer papers or anything. When we get a warm body, we're going to keep them. So I said, sir, can I get transferred to the West Coast? I said, uh, I just re-up. I only live 12 miles from here. He said, yeah. He said, you will in two years. And they kept me there two years to the day. And we put the New Jersey in commission. Okay, yeah, so uh, you, were, you were back at the Bayonne Navy Yard. We got to the Bayonne Navy Yard. They were just putting New Jersey in commission. Uh, we worked on the New Jersey, got that in commission. They recommissioned it there. And uh, then we worked on the aircraft carrier, the USS Tarawa. Uh, we got that ready for commissioning, but we didn't commission it there. They sent it over to the Brooklyn Navy Yard. We worked on it, and then the work we couldn't finish, they sent it to Brooklyn. And then another ship we worked on was the uh, USS White Marsh. It was one of the ships that you can sink down the back down so the ship can pull in and uh, okay. get repaired. Mm -hmm. And then we inventoried, uh, while I was there after that, we inventoried the USS Guam and Alaska. They were the only two battle cruisers in the Navy at that time, and they were going to scrap them. So we had an inventory of uh, both ships for uh, records, I guess, in Washington, D.C. And it was two years to the day that they kept me there. My orders came in, and I went on to the USS Midway, the aircraft carrier, uh, for two years. Um, so when you were working on the commissioning of these ships, a lot of that work was done in the Navy Yard itself. In right? the Navy Yard itself. Yeah, like we had a great dry big dock dry dock right, right yeah. there in okay. Bayonne. Yeah, we had yeah. a big dry dock. Yeah, maybe just explain that for somebody who doesn't really understand how a dry dock works. Well, the dry dock is right on the, the Hudson River, and it has a great big gate that opens up. And the water flows, but they put the, put the ship in, they uh, shore it up underneath. And then they fill it up with well, they fill it up with water first, and the ship comes in. Then they close that gate, and then they pump the water out, and it's sitting on uh, blocks, so they can work underneath. Like when okay. they take the barnacles and all that off the bottom, they uh, power wash it. Open and up. can go underneath. Go underneath. It. They get underneath. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well then, so you did two years on the Midway as well? Yes. Yeah. And were you out at sea on, uh, with the Midway? Yeah, we made two more trips over to Europe. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe either on, on the Midway or some of your previous times when you were on some of the other ships, maybe tell us about a couple of your, your, your tours or port of calls, interesting places that you went. Oh, well we, uh, the first trip we were over there on the Gaynard, my first trip, the eight months, we were in uh, quite a bit of places we went to. First of all, you pull into Gibraltar. It's the Sixth Fleet. And we relieve the other unit of the Sixth Fleet. In other words, it's just usually a six-month tour, but we did eight. And then you go into the Mediterranean. And then we went to Naples, in Greece, Turkey, Syria, North Africa, Oran, Tunisia, France, Venice, Genoa, Sicily, Sardinia, Capri, the Greek islands, uh, Lemnos, Leros, Alexandria, Egypt, Malta, Cyprus, and we also went into Turkey. That was our eight month trip. And then when I was on the H.J. Thomas, our first trip over on that ship was about the same ports because okay. you, you, you out to see with the with the group of ships, and then on weekends they split up and go to different ports. And that's what kept Europe alive over there. Right. That pumped a lot of money oh, in yeah. over there. Yeah. 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 Well, so when you went to some of these, I mean, that's a quite a list of interesting and exotic yeah. ports. Were you allowed to get off the ship? Or yes. You... When we got to Naples, when we first pulled to Naples, it was all blown up from the war. I mean, they had the ships overturned in the harbor. They were cutting them up, and the one great big cruise ship was on its side, and they just made a gangway on it, wow. so we could pull right up to it. And uh, the Greek islands, we were, of course, a destroyer, smaller ships, so we were the first warships in those islands after the war. And uh, they let us, you know, had port and starboard uh, liberty. Port goes one night, day, and the next day the starboard goes. Okay. And we'd stay maybe three, four days in port, and then we'd meet up with the group again, go on maneuvers again, and then split up again after so many days. And then yeah. we did that the whole trip. If you got time off to go off the ship, were you still in the Navy uniform? Oh yeah, we had to wear a uniform, okay. yeah, in them days, yes. And uh, we didn't use American money. We had the, uh, uh, what do you call it, script. And uh, because uh, Lucky Luciano, the gangster, he was in Naples, and they always told us before we went ashore, if you meet him, do not talk to him. That was a uh, no-no. Okay. But uh, some of the other ports we had a good time, like in the Casbah and stuff. It was, it was interesting, but a lot of guys uh, got drugged and got their uniforms taken off them and uh, stole their money and everything. It's, uh, it was a good trip. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What kind of things did you guys do on the ship uh, if you had any free time? Well, on the Midway, well, on the Destroyer, we uh, used to have movies at night on the outside on the deck. Okay. It was uh, clear enough where yeah. not uh, too stormy because uh, the ships are always rocking and yeah. rolling. Yeah. And uh, that was about the uh, entertainment we had. We used to play a lot of uh, uh, cards. Okay. Uh, that was about it. Cause destroy. We only had like 240 men, and uh, there wasn't too much you could do on that small ship. Yeah. You know. Yeah. What were your living conditions like on a ship? We had uh, bunks. They were uh, aluminum frame, and we, uh, it was lashed with. Uh, we had canvas that went in it. was lashed with rope. Okay. And it was three high. And when you got up, we all had to put them up and chain them up so you can get into your locker underneath. Your locker was underneath the, the bunks. So if the guy was sleeping on the bottom bunk, you couldn't get into your locker if you needed it. Okay. Uh, and uh, the chow line, we had to line up outside. If it was stormy out, we had, we had a passageway inside. But you had to go between midships. You get so many guys that wouldn't line and it was rough out you had to close the hatches and then they let so many guys went across when the ship was uh, an even keel but uh, other than that we had, we had a good time 
uh, it was close quarters, but you had good friends. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, did you have any ever any organized like USO shows or any big ticket things like? Well, that? the only time we had them if we were next to an aircraft carrier that they would take us over there to see the boxing matches. They used to have okay. boxing all the time, and uh, okay, that was about it. But like in person, real people boxing. Oh no, this was Navy guys. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh yeah, yeah, um, Navy person. Boxing smokers. Or yeah, but, yeah. 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 Okay. Wow. And then that would be. A big event. Like yeah, people yeah. Would come out for yeah. That. Okay. How did you stay in contact with with family and friends when you guys were out at sea? Well, we had uh, the mail would be delivered. The, the aircraft carrier would get the planes off, and then we'd pull up alongside the uh, aircraft carrier, and they would uh, ship the mail over to us uh, by long lines. They called it. That's how we used to refuel at sea and replenish. Uh, the food mm -hmm. with the long lines, and then that way the mail would come in on, on the aircraft carrier, um, and they, then, then would it would they uh, distribute it to the right. ships that were there were going, and then we'd get alongside of it and they'd ship the bags over. Right. And then the same thing, ship. outgoing mail, outgoing go. the same way. How yeah. often do you think you guys got got mail? Uh, maybe every couple of weeks. But it was probably yeah. a big event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I saw on the on the, the paperwork here when talking to you before. So you you as you caught the tail end of occupation of Europe for World War II. So you were in Italy for sure, but a couple of the other ports were there, were you still seeing war damage? Oh yes, so all, over, just, all over Europe. Everything was blown up. Yeah. Over maybe there. just describe everything, everything was just rubble. Yeah. Just rubble. You know, there was no windows left. Uh, nothing. Wind crumbled buildings. Mm -hmm. The streets were all blown up. There really wasn't too much you could do at that time in 1947. Later on in 48, 49, they were starting to rebuild a little bit. They had, you know, a few restaurants open and the bars, of course, that's to get well, that the was, money in. You that know. was Naples, right? That was Naples yeah. and all the ports, France, uh, Marseille and Cannes. And uh, then we went to uh, Alexandria, Egypt. And we pulled in there, and what do you think we saw? Coca-Cola plant. Really? A big Coca-Cola plant. Then they, we had to get on up at 4 o'clock in the morning, get on a bus to go into Cairo to see the pyramids and the uh, Sphinx. But it was a four-hour ride on a bus. Okay. Was it worth seeing, though? Oh, yeah. 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 It was unbelievable. How was the port in Alexandria and in Egypt? Was that one damaged as it well? Was, or no. Not it, too much? That didn't get too much yeah. there, no. Egypt didn't get hit that yeah. much. Yeah. Yeah. What about in Tunisia? That must have Tunisia been... Tunisia was blown up yeah. a lot, yeah. But you had to be careful in the, uh, North African ports, like Oran and that, because they had the Kasbahs, and there's narrow alleyways. And that's what I used to rob the guys. I'd wait by the buildings and I'd get them and, uh, into that. Or in a bar, they'd uh, spike the drink, the guy pass out, take all his clothes, his money, and leave them. Leave them. <laughs> Have some sailors come yeah, down yeah. to the ship. Well, we, did, it we, had to do, uh, we had to do uh, shore patrol okay. also. Okay. Some, uh, some nights, it was our turn to, to rotate to go do shore patrol. I was like, being a police officer over there, you know. Okay. So, so you did that? Oh yeah. Any? Yeah. Uh, Everybody was assigned that. Yeah. Any interesting or funny stories from doing that? No. We. Uh, the only thing I used to do is all the sewerage or from the toilets what they had. There was no flushing. It just ran out into a little gully, like out in the middle of the sidewalk, and that was it. So when I used to go back to the ship, I used to take all my clothes off, put them in the we had a garbage can where we made a wash machine out of and uh, I used to steam all my shoes because we had the steam lines down the fire room. Then I'd have to shine them all over again. Wow. I did the soles, everything was so filthy. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Huh. Um, are there any other incidents that really stand out, either ship duty or shore duty, something, well, something frightening or an accident or my last My last trip on a destroyer, the H.J. Thomas, in 1949, we were two days out with the task force and we caught on fire, the midships, 
and the ship. Uh, we thought we were going to go back to the United States, but they kept us going. And it was in the middle compartment, right in the middle of the ship. And it was where we had all our small arms, ammunition and rifles and everything. And they had a lot of storage of uh, rice and beans and all that stuff, flour. And the whole thing burnt. And they had to flood it. And when they flooded it, it caused the bulkhead to buckle a little bit. And it threw our number one shaft out of line and it burnt up all the bearings. So we had to go all the way over to uh, Toronto, Italy uh, on one screw. But they kept us with the task force. And we stayed there for about two weeks trying to get the bearings fixed because they were so out of line with right. the bulkhead going up. But that's about the only bad thing. We, did, we blew a lot of mines up. Too. We were mostly blowing mines up. Mines were floating all over the place out mm -hmm. there. These were like leftover from World War, War II? World okay. War yeah, II, yeah. Well, how, what was the procedure to, to find a mine and then how did y'all blow it well, up? Had got, well, I was always in the boiler room, so I didn't get, wasn't up on deck. But when they did find them, they had guys on lookout with binoculars and they had riflemen who would uh, shoot them and hit that pin because they all had spikes on them. Mm -hmm. And they had to just hit it, and they'd blow up. Wow. So that had to be a pretty good shot. Oh yeah, on a, on a yeah, because the ship, ship was moving. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I guess um, there were probably navy ships or commercial ships that still hit some of these mines. Oh yeah, the oh yeah. Was over. yeah. There's probably still a lot of them over there yet that yeah. haven't come up. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, it looks like you got promoted several times too in the navy. What was your final rank? Uh, Boil them in first class. First class. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, do any any of your promotions stand out? Anything special about when you got promoted? Any of those times? No, they just what you did. You had to take a test. You know, they had correspondence courses, and then you took the test, and then they just sent you a certificate, and that was it. And then say, all right, go to the tailor, put you another stripes on. So is that like a, a chief? Is a first class a, a type of chief? No, chief would be next. Okay. Uh, it was like E7. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But so pretty difficult with the test. From what I remember, the test could be pretty difficult. Yeah. Yeah. You have to know your, your stuff. Both your technical field and then your, your, your general, general naval, that, naval yeah. seamanship or naval yeah. knowledge. Okay. Okay. Um, any big storms? You ever get caught in like a really big storm on the ship? Yeah. On the when I first was on the Gainer, we were up in the North Atlantic, and people don't realize how water can really push you around. And our number one gun mount, which was a dual gun mount up on the front, there were five inch thirty eights. It bent the gun mount. Wow! That's how powerful it was. And then another time coming through, uh, to go to the Triangle in Bermuda. Sometimes it was like a lake. And another time, man, you rocked and rolled. I thought the ship was going to roll over at one time. I mean, yeah. it was so bad. But uh, it's amazing how they can come right back over again. Yeah, wow. I mean, I guess there's always a lot of superstition, too, about the Bermuda Triangle. Oh, yeah, Bermuda Triangle. Let's uh, always talk about that. Okay. Um, did you ever cross the equator? Because I know in the Navy no. had a big tradition. No. Uh, the only thing they kept sending me, I don't know why it was me, but only over to the Mediterranean. I never got anywhere else okay. but the Mediterranean. Because I think there's a Navy tradition when you cross the well, equator. Oh, yeah, you got to kiss the belly, belly and they yeah. got the King Neptune. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you missed that. No, I missed uh, all that, yeah. Well, maybe, maybe that's just as well, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so what, when did you finally finish with the Navy? Uh, August of 1954. Okay. Yeah. So, and that was with including the time that you had the break? Yeah. So, yeah. 54. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, any awards stand out to you that either you got personally or No, I just got my got? regular medals and uh, ribbon and uh, good conduct. I did get good conduct. I didn't, I didn't foul up. That was the main thing. Okay, and any yeah. any unit awards that the ship might have gotten that you were part of? During the war, the ship, the gainer did. And I found out later on that after I got off it, they sold the ship to uh, Ar Iran, believe it or not. That wow. destroyer went to Iran. Wow. 
You think it's still operational? No, no, not now. I don't, maybe over there with them, you know, but... A different, uh, different name, I yeah. would imagine. So, okay. Well, what would you do after the Navy? I, uh, well, I had a couple jobs, you know. Uh, I became a postman. Okay. I was a mailman for uh, five years. And I was making uh, $4,000 a year. Wow. And... Uh, and I'm, I got married uh, and uh, I have uh, seven kids. Now I've got seven kids, 11 grandchildren, and five great grandchildren. Wow. So I got a pretty big family. Yeah. Well, what would you want your, your extended family? You were just talking about your family. What would you want them to know about you and, in particular, your, your, your military service and what it meant to you? Well, it, meant, it, it makes you grow up quick. When you get out of high school, it's a, a whole new uh, life, and you grow up real quick. And I, in today's world, I don't know about kids going in the service anymore. It's, it's changed. So they, uh, they don't have the time that we did. It, it's a whole new modern outfit everything is computerized and and everything but you're going to be up on your game to go in today but i enjoyed what i did i mean i don't regret it i had a good time i had a lot of bad times but uh, we, we we survived and that's about it and if you're out there you can survive yourselves yeah well yeah six, yeah. six to eight months at a time out at sea you know yeah uh, yeah pretty significant so, okay, well then the, the last question is, is kind of the catch-all question. Is there anything, I know you got a lot of notes there, but is there anything else that you wanted to cover or that? Follow, no, follow it's just that uh, this, uh, I just got my, my ribbons were a World War II victory medal. Okay. The Navy Occupation Medal for Europe, American Area Campaign, and a Good Conduct Medal. That, that's the ribbons I that, that I got. Yeah. But uh, when I was on the Midway, we used to have a, we were seven decks down, so we never seen the sun. And uh, once in a while we had what they call a smoke watch. You were up in the superstructure and you watched the planes taking off and landing, but you couldn't have any smoke coming out of the smokestack. Of, of the ship? ships? Oh, okay. On the ship yeah, because yeah, of yeah. the aircraft coming in or taking off. When I was on the Midway, it was the old Midway because it only had uh, the straight deck. And when I got off it in 54, it went out to Bremerton, Washington, and it had the canter deck put on. Now it's a museum in San Diego. And the battleship New Jersey that we put in commission, I, my granddaughter in a school trip went on it and she called me up after she got home. She says, Poppy, she says, your name is on a plaque on the New Jersey. I said, well, I didn't know that. I said, but now I do know it. I, I haven't gotten down to see it yet. Well, that's in, uh, in Camden, Camden, right? Camden yes. New Jersey. Yeah. And what's, so tell us about the plaque that... Uh... I have no idea what it looks like. Oh. I haven't seen it. She just said that my name was on the plaque. Maybe as part uh, of the, the, the what, it was the decommissioning at that point, right? Or no, the, commissioning. The commission, I'm sorry. Yeah, Putting so in commission. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. Yeah, maybe as part of the, the team and the crew that did the, yeah, we were, the commissioning. Yeah, and we all, but I you know, went in them gun mounts. My God, they're unbelievable. Unbelievable. We, you know, we got to see the whole ship. Right. And uh, we were down in the boiler room, of course, putting the boilers back in because they had them. It was in mothballs, what they call mothball. And the ship was into three sections, A, B, C. And they had like dehumidifiers that are oh, running wow. all the time. And they have a, like in the gun mounts and that, they cover it with a webbing. And then they put a special coating over it so it's waterproof and everything. And they keep uh, the certain hatches in the ship open in each section. And these humidifiers keep it uh, same temperature and everything, so and nothing rusts. Because they have to put it back in commission, okay. they can just right. take everything apart and put it back in. Okay. But it was it was like a job. I had three out of four nights off, three out of four weekends. Yeah. And we ate good. <laughs> yeah. Nobody was shooting no, at you. At that no, point, nobody right? was shooting at us. No.
Well, this pretty much, Don, wraps up the interview. I would like to give you on behalf of our museum. Oh. This is one of our challenge oh. points. Thank you. And maybe just hold it up yeah. for the camera real quick. There you go. And uh, it's always thank a you. It's a to meet. Thanks Clarence. again, Jay. It's a good, yeah. uh, very positive uh, meeting.